Hello you people interested in non-duality. Today I'm going to board this topic of impermanence because here is where we should probably start if we're going to understand reality and somehow this is something that is right under our noses and we just don't pay attention to it. We kind of ignore it and I think that's a key word that we're going to explore later on. We ignore the reality that everything is changing, nothing is permanent. So this is the word anitya, which simply means impermanent, something that is not static. And when we explore our world, our universe, our lives, we see that all has been impermanent. Everything has been changing. That's probably another word we can use, change. Everything is moving. Everything is in a constant transformation, if you want to use that term. So the thing that I love about non-duality is that it gives you the practical means for you to explore the essence of what we're talking about. And it doesn't go into any, any metaphysics or any complicated or esoteric concepts. No elaborate ideas or views of reality and actually cuts right through the nonsense. And this is one of the things that we, we know, but we ignore, like I said, and that's a, that's a word that we will explore later on, but check in your reality and try to point at something that has been permanent. You won't find it as you explore with your mind, the world, the universe, history, uh, people, situations, everything has been changing and nothing has been static. When you think about it, even the sense of the place in which you live is always changing. And we have this notion in science that we're going to find that fundamental particle when everything, everything is made out of that particle. And that's one of the biggest fallacies, uh, if not the biggest fallacy of modern science is that we're trying to find that which we cannot uh, find in objective reality ever, which is something static, something that is the foundation of what we call matter. Everything is just changing. We don't have to get into the quantum physics or the esoteric knowledge that everything is energy, everything is vibration. We don't know anything of that. We don't know any of that. We're just simple explorers here in non-duality. And we're just checking that our experience is actually, uh, let's say, true to what we're thinking to our philosophical standpoint, which is that everything is changing. So why is this important? Because we base our lives always trying to achieve something and hold on to it. And why would you want to hold on to water in a river? You see, the river is flowing and is doing what it's doing. Otherwise it stops being a river. So why would you want to stop the river? Why would you want to stop life? Why would you want to change the law of it's not even a law, it's just simply the nature of it. We, we won't even concern ourselves with laws here in non-duality. It's just checking our reality. Why would we hold on to people, situations, places, uh, events, and so on? Now, on the contrary, if we were so, um, let's say, zealous into trying to find something static, imagine that you can paralyze somebody forever and you can keep them forever that way. They won't move, they won't act, they won't change, they won't transform themselves into anything. Where's the fun that? All right, maybe not a person, but uh, a place. You want to keep the place perfectly as it is and don't allow it to get dirty or to move things because you want things to be static. Would that be that interesting? Why would you want to do that? You see, we don't explore these opposites of what, we, of what we want. Imagine that you couldn't change at all, that you could just stay in the same, at the same age, in the same place, doing the same thing. You won't be able to do even do the same thing because there is no change. There is no movement. So you will be static. Would that be something you want to explore? Why? What's the purpose of that? You see, so we ignore this. 
And in our delusion, we try to hold on to reality because we think the reality can actually, we can get a, a, a grip on it. And we ignore that our suffering may be coming from that in part, it's only in part, but it's a, it's a simple concept. It's simple check of reality that we tend to ignore sometimes. And in our view of the world, we suffer because of that, because we ignore the truth. And this is one of the truth that we can talk about. We have never been able to find anything that is permanent, static, that will stay there. And with our minds, all we can do is explore and see that which is changing, that which is transforming. And again, I promise we won't get into esoteric knowledge or anything like that, but if things are vibrating, if things are changing, you would see that even within the change, there is still a sort of concrete unity to it because that which vibrates is not really changing. It's just vibrating. So it's just moving. And when we find and we explore reality, we find that yes, things are vibrating. Light is vibrating. Sound is vibrating. Sensations are vibrations and so on. They're all undulations of perception. And so when we see that reality as a whole is simply vibrating, it's moving, it's changing. And though those patterns of vibration, of course, become ever more complex because a simple vibration doesn't cut it. And we're only aware of a minute form of vibration on reality. And it's making all of this. You can see the infinite potential of vibration that exists within reality. So you start to see a little bit of the static nature of the vibrational reality, if that makes sense, that there is a wholeness to it because all that there is is vibration within the whole of the body of the universe. But again, this concept is just for you to explore that within your experience, you will never find anything that is static. You see, maybe this is part of our delusion that we can look at something and it seems to stay there. You see, there's no, there's no change to it. If I stay still and I look at an object that is just sitting there, it looks like it's static. But when we look closer and closer, we know that it's just vibrating, it's moving. And so there is a decay to it. There is an interaction with the environment. Everything is interacting with everything. And so it's only an illusion, a perceptual illusion that things are static. And that's where we get the idea that we may do the same with our lives, ignoring that we have never been able to experience something static. Everything has been changing. So there you have it. That's a good explanation of what Anitya means. It's a, uh, it's impermanence. It's constant change. Simple as that. Nothing too complicated. It's just the nature of reality as perceived by the mind. So this is the only thing that we can start with. And that would obviously explain what this, this world is, what our lives is, because we have been changing always and we will continue to change and everybody who has been born has died. So we're going to die as well. And why would we fear that? Just part of the change and transformation. But at this point, of course, we're talking to the mind and the mind gets really nervous when it's all about the unknown. The mind is scared of the unknown. And as long as we see the world from the mind, we're going to be scared. But that's the thrill of it. That's the whole drama of the universe is to get lost in this fear of death. It would be no fun if we knew from the beginning, we always knew that death is just transformation. 
is not the cessation of anything. But we fear that. And that same fear gets extrapolated to everything else in our lives. What if I lose this? What if this changes? What would happen? So the fear is not the fear of losing, but the fear of transformation. And that is because we ignore the fact that we're always living in the unknown. The future comes from the unknown, if we can even call it a future. It's just the unknown is what's changing reality. And we live in that. So when we accept that everything is impermanent, we no longer want to cling to reality. So I hope this made sense as usual and that you can check it, of course, in your experience. You don't need to learn anything. You don't need to read any books. You don't even have to watch more videos about this. This is all you need to know about impermanence. Everything else is just going to be to be put into context, nothing else. But with this knowledge in and of itself, you can already explore the nature of your life, that everything around you is always changing, transforming. It will die if you want to use that word or transmute if you want to use a more new agey word or transform, change. That's the nature of impermanence. So again, hope it made sense. Let me know if you have any comments and I'll see you in the next video.